Um, thank you very much for coming. So the three of us are still moving and we're going to each say something so you'll get a little taste of what it is to be in a collective of artists. Um, the, I'm Leonie and um, I'm married to Martin and we've known Laura since we were children so we, um, it brings a lot to, to, to what we do together. I was fortunate enough to be an artist in residence with the CMM Centre um, and the outcome was a film, Our Body is a Planet, which I think you can see on the website as well. And during that process, the scientists shared the most extraordinary stories, films, photographs, all part of their research. And I would bring that back to Lauren Martin and we felt incredibly inspired and it was like walking into a whole new world. And they were very much part of that process, that initial process. So when the commission came across, we, we really started with that microscopic footage that I was first looking at in the residency. So the sculpture reveals the invisible and often overlooked kingdom of fungi that exists among us. It is inspired by the way pathogenic or disease-giving fungi move through a human host and the extraordinary ways that our, uh, our human immune system responds. The sculpture doesn't claim to be a precise rendering of a, a fungal and human immune interaction. Instead, it tries to capture the feeling of a speculative entanglement. We're interested, as a collective, in the notion that immunity is a process of negotiation and damage management. Fungi can become us a part of who we are. We've taken the word pharmacon, which can mean both remedy and poison, killer or cure, as the title for the sculpture. We wanted to make visible the precarious dance between a healthy host and a disease-causing fungi and the tension that exists within that balance. Pharmacon explores Candida, one of the pathogenic fungi studied here within the MRC Centre, in the form of Candida albicans, which grows delicate, branching, hyphal strands from rounded mother buds. What about mother buds? Yeast cells. Yeast cells, sorry. <laughs> these are the hyphal strands and these are the, the cells. Um, in the sculpture, the, the human host is invisible, but it's present in the silhouette that the hyphae and the mother cells trace, and, the, and these immune cells here, called macrophage, or phagocytes, which um, that, 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 that they encounter. We began by the design process by imagining a cylindrical sort of laboratory core, core sample, almost like a biopsy um, taken from a human in which fungal hyphae are exploring and growing in their search for nutrients, while at the same time, the macrophage try to keep them in balance. Working with the traditional proportions of classical and figurative sculpture, this tries to bring the human scale to an imaginary journey of fungi as it seeks out nutrients and avoids areas of scarcity. Phagocytes or macrophages shapeshift as they try to limit the fungi spread. These astounding interactions are going on inside our bodies all of the time. As Adelia Warris said when we did our interview for the commission, Bernard Shaw in a play said once that stimulate the phagocytes, drugs are a delusion, which points to immunotherapy and working to stimulate these systems of healing that nature has already provided for us. So as you can see, we're beginning to learn a little bit about patho pathogenic fungi, but we've also learned an awful lot about uh, wax building and bronze casting during the process. So the sculpture was first of all made entirely in wax, and then it was cast from recycled bronze using the lost wax process, which is a technique that many of you will be familiar with that was first documented many thousands of years ago. And we've really used this commission to learn how to work with wax and with bronze casting. And it really has been an extraordinary learning experience that Paul from Phoenix Arts has very patiently guided us through. And uh, we are very grateful for this generosity, Paul. We've made a film about uh, the, the making process, which is also accessible through the QR code. And what we, one of the sort of things that we were really interested in exploring was the way that bronze has been traditionally used to commemorate and celebrate colonial projects. We deliberately chose to use bronze in a public open space for another purpose, 
to draw attention to our multi-species world, much of which is under threat due to ongoing colonial practices. Traditionally, artists will decide the coloration of a bronze sculpture by applying a set of chemicals to control the process of oxidization of the copper. Um, traditionally, green, brown, black are the most common patterns that you might see in some of the sculptures on the sculpture trail. We have decided to, to leave Pharmacon to develop its own patination slowly over time, and its final coloration will respond to and to depend on the atmospheric ambient conditions here in Exeter. So what you see now is it in its raw bronze state, but we hope it will slowly evolve over time. We're interested to see where that will take it, and we actually don't know, and it's quite exciting to see where it will go. So finally, just to say that this collaboration with uh, CMM has been peer-to-peer -peer and it has been enormously inspirational, and you have all been so generous, the scientists and CMM, to share your research and your knowledge. The dialogue between the methodologies has been a real honor to be a part of, to be witness to your incredible expertise. To be able to call Neil Gow to check Little Wax, Mother Yeast Cells, to call on Gordon for expertise, to call on Adelia to come over with Gordon to look at the sculpture and make little parts of it even, has been a unique experience and really special. Pharmacon is a general call to be more curious about the microbes that make up our world. In its essence, it is a mycelial warning that the wonder of life is held in very delicate balance. We'd like to thank the scientists so much, the commissioning team, everyone that Gordon mentioned, and Paul from Phoenix Art for making this all possible. Thank you.